Never underestimate the power of a good science demonstration. Some of the most gifted science communicators, like Richard Feynman and Carl Sagan, and more recently Brian Cox, are incredibly good at explaining really hard science using simple, everyday concepts. I've come along to the ASC conference to find out how creative demonstrations can be used to breathe new life into science classes. The Association for Science Education has been supporting teachers and science educators since 1900. Around 3,000 delegates have come here to the University of Reading for the ASC's annual conference. Over three days they will explore the latest creative ideas in science education, particularly through simple demonstrations and collaborative workshops. It's amazing how slowly you can do the, the water and the water doesn't come out. Basically this is tonic water um, and I hope you, you know that tonic water fluoresces in ultraviolet light but it also fluoresces very nicely at 405 nanometers. Every physics lab should have an electric guitar in it. And this is just quite a nice one because if you've got a, a, a laser and if you want to show interference, all you, all you need to do is... Okay, are we ready? My point is, can you see there is... Okay, some total internal reflection going on at the top there. The stuff with the, um, the blue laser pen was particularly useful. It's such a cheap piece of kit now that Blu-rays come out. So quite cheap to get hold of and showing fluorescence in such an easy way just with a bottle of tonic water. Absolutely brilliant. So what happens when I open the tap? Will the big one blow the little one up or will the little one blow the big one up? Amazingly, the little one blows the big one up. So this is what we're going to do. So we're going to see the launch demonstrated, then we're going to make it, and then we'll look at some teaching ideas. I think this is, this is a really inspiring workshop. We're learning how to do things that the students will be able to do themselves, something really practical. What, what we're hoping is that the teachers will go away with a piece of kit that they could use literally the next day that will inspire the kids and make the teaching of, of speed and motion a little bit more exciting. I'm feeling fairly confident that we could win this. I think it's an exciting way to teach forces. Well, my lessons at least are based on the demonstrations. Without the demonstrations, um, well, and the experiments, the kids, if they were just sitting there, would be completely bored and really wouldn't be engaging with it. So having something lively, something that they can relate to, whether it's toys or something that's just moving, making noises, things that they hopefully want to go and buy so that they can show their friends and parents is always a winner. What I've got is a, some wadding in here, soaked in, in paraffin. Okay, so there it is. And the whole thing sits on a little turntable. Now this is the tough bit. All right, okay, let's see if that works. <laughs> uh, the gauze is, is not a protective uh, element here. It is actually causing uh, vortices uh, as it spins around and uh, well, you can see the effect. It really is uh, a complicated helical pattern drawing the flame right up, almost licking the underneath of that projector, which is why it's perhaps a to switch off. It's all very well doing theory, but until you've sort of interfered with the universe and, and you know, actually done something, stretched it, pulled it a little bit, then you don't really know how it reacts. So I think you know, practical is crucial to science.